Hello and welcome to the Flickering Torch and on today's episode we're going to talk about getting your players into a new game system. <laughs> getting your players into a new game system is always something that I think a lot of GMs struggle with. After people kind of learn one system they kind of want to keep with that system because learning all of the rules to a new game is really really tough. Uh, I tend to prefer sort of rules light games so it's less of an issue when I'm running things because I'm usually trying to run something that everyone can learn very quickly and kind of get into and, and start playing. This week I received Hieronymus as a review copy, which is a really odd game sort of based on Hieronymus Bosch, which is this, this feudal artist. There's going to be a review of that on the channel soon, but I just needed to prepare for the game beforehand, so I thought I'd make this little video telling people how I do that. When learning a new system, I find it's best to follow this order. So my first step is read the book. Now you don't have to read the whole book, and this is the trick. Skim the player options, because it's not really going to affect me as the GM until one of your players chooses that class or they need to know that specific rule. Another thing you can just skim read is the monster options or, or the sets of monsters. If you know what all the monsters are kind of like, then when you go to select them later, you'll be able to find them, but you don't need to know the stat box. You don't need to read that a goblin has minus one strength. So yeah, read the book, but skim read segments that aren't going to be that important to you. After this first step, What's next? Well, I usually get out a pen and a paper and I sit usually with a digital copy of the book and make notes on it. And this is really important because you kind of don't really absorb the information until you've had to either A, use it or B, write it down. And you don't want to have to learn the system all from scratch at the table. So writing it down is kind of a nice middle ground. Now, my notes aren't very long, so for Hieronymus, uh, this this was my initial page of notes. This is the, the adventure I'm going to run underneath it. So it's about half a page. Uh, for bigger systems, it's been more. For even simpler systems than this, I can maybe fit it on an index card, depending on how close it is to something I've already played. But you need to write these notes. So when you're sat at the table and someone asks you, oh, how does this mechanic work? You don't have to remember it out the back of your brain all the way. You can kind of really quickly skim your notes for that section. So I've got stuff in here like dice rolls, d6 equals skill. So that means you roll a number of d6 equal to your skill. In my kind of, my brain, this is my shorthand notes. And that will allow you to bring your players in because you won't have to be flicking through the book which will look daunting to them because it looks like, oh, there's so many rules, not even my GM could figure it out. And this will sort of embolden your players to be able to play because if you can fit all of the rules that you think are relevant on one sheet or two sheets of paper, then you're winning. There's nothing more that they need to learn apart from one or two sheets of paper. I have in the past written my notes in a way that someone could just read that one sheet of paper and start playing with us. Sure, it'll miss off a lot of the nuance of the system, a lot of the twists, but what's more important in the first session? Getting players into the game that you really want to play in the awesome setting, or all the little minutiae that kind of add weight to the setting but aren't really vastly important to start playing. I would say that it's probably best to have a page, maybe a page and a half, two pages, of just everything that you would need to start playing the game. So my next big one, and this is kind of if you're playing in a longer form game, is player handouts really, really help. Even if you're playing a short game, if you can give something to players that they can really quickly skim, read, and find the rules they need. In fact, I've got my Forbidden Lands stuff. Let me go find that. Let me uh, blow the dust off these, because we haven't been able to use them in about a year because of the whole COVID thing. This is my player handout for Forbidden Lands. Uh, don't be scared by the binder. It was just in a binder so that they could have like extra paper and stuff. Quite like doing this kind of thing, because it means that people already have everything they need to jump in. Right, so this is my Forbidden Lands player binder. And this is, was gonna be, was, it was gonna be before the lockdown, um, a really long form game of Forbidden Lands where we would be playing through this expansion that came out for it. Because uh, I really wanted to play this and I really wanted to write a review on it, but then COVID happened and my in-person group, I thought it was not going to last very long COVID. So I kind of just put this on hold. So unfortunately, I've not got to play all the way through this, which is annoying. That tangent aside, this was the player handout for that game. What it includes in here is maybe a one, two sentence description of how you make a regular ability check, how the fails work, how, how the gear works, how group roles work, and how helping others works. 
And then we've got like a breakdown of the experience at the bottom of the page and spending experience. So basically everything they needed to play the actual game is, is sort of that half to do regular ability checks, which I think is the first thing you should teach them. And then it goes on to sort of the map movement here on the second page. And then one of the tables from the book I've just transposed into a uh, into a, an easier to digest, easy to find thing, it's right here, and then the conditions that your character can suffer from. So without combat, that's everything they need to play the game. And Forbidden Lands has got a fair whack of rules because it's got all the traveling and all the resource management and stuff. But I can fit everything that they need to play. Sure, it's missing a lot of nuance and it's not got the beautiful art and it's not got the examples on one page. So when my players came to see Forbidden Lands, I was like, here, just read this and that's all everything you need. And if anything comes up that you don't have, I can give it to you because I, I know I've read the whole thing, right? So you don't want the players to have to read the whole book for you to start playing it because otherwise they're never going to pick up a new system. Doing stuff like this really helps. And then I had a whole other segment because Forbidden Lands also has like a fair amount of combat rules because it's got a bunch of different actions you can take. So I just did a big breakdown of uh, this is the zones, so how combat distance works, and then this is um, the actions. But the actions aren't written out like they're written in the book, because in the book they've got a lot of nuance, a lot of examples. I've just tried to write it out in the simplest terms possible. So for um, a stab attack, it's got a prerequisite, because all of them have a prerequisite, so that's a pointed weapon. Uh, it's got the skill that you're going to be rolling, which is melee, and then it's got like the actual effect. So roll melee plus gear dice can be dodged and parried, minus two or plus, plus two with a shield to parry. Each success is one more damage. That's not how it's written in the book from my, um, from my recollection, but that's just kind of me trying to simplify it down as much as possible. And I do this for pretty much every game I run, I will build a cheat sheet. I want players to be able to know what they're about to do on their turn without having to ask me on their turn. I obviously don't mind teaching someone the rules, I don't mind talking someone through that. But for them to make their own decisions, it's nice to have that little cheat sheet that can be like, oh, I want to, oh, I've got a pointed weapon. Let's see what I can do. Prerequisite pointed. Oh, I can stab them with, uh, with this or I could parry them or, or, or do all of these other things. So in my mind, making that cheat sheet is really invaluable. And the other big thing I do, uh, and this is probably just a me thing, um, is I usually create a video about how to do the ability checks. Now, there's one living on this channel two others on an old channel I used to have that is, has mostly got my uni work on. So I don't use that channel anymore, but there's a Forbidden Lands video and a Song of Ice and Fire role-playing video that I just went through and I did one skill check. And that lets the players see moment to moment like what I'm going to have to do for an ability check. Because in my games, I, I try and keep combat and ability checks sort of equal. Um, because I just, I just think it makes a lot of sense that they're going to be solving a lot of problems rather than just killing a lot of things so I like to do the ability check and usually the ability check is used in combat so I create like a little short video that just goes through an ability check and it doesn't need to be anything high production if you watch the shadow run one on this channel it's really not it's me sat on roll 20 being like here is an ability check Du -du 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 -du. So I think that's super super helpful or if you can find a video that already explains it and maybe has that production value go ahead you can use my shadow run third edition one if you really want um, I've, I've been meaning to go back and remake my Forbidden Lands and my um, Song of Ice and Fire one to put on this channel. So if you're interested in that, leave me a link. Not leave me a link. Leave me a leave me a comment below, um, and I'll try and add that. So those are kind of my tips for getting new players into new RPGs. I guess veteran players, getting your players into those games that are a bit weird, a bit funky, and you really wanted to play. So I just thought I'd do this because I was planning out um, Hieronymus again which should be a review maybe next week, maybe the week after. But I think this is sort of really good advice because a lot of GMs will have shelves worth of books. I've got a fairly minor collection, considering some that I've seen. And you want to play those games. You don't want them always sat back there. You want to drag them out and show people how to play them and see and let people know why you thought they were awesome in the first place. So if this video helps you, or if you disagree with some of the points, I think... I might have some disagreements with that first point. Please leave me a comment. Let me know how you teach new players new games. Have you tried teaching new players or even veteran players new games? What are your tips? What are your tricks? If you've got any cheat sheets, I wish companies would release the cheat sheets. Like, because I think that would... 
be really helpful. Like if you could have like a, not exactly a whole quick start, but just like a page or two of, of everything in the game kind of broken down to its simplest components. I think that'd be super helpful. So anyway, yeah, give me a like, give me a comment, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you next time on The Flickering Torch.